I'm privileged to have here on the seat with me Reverend Dr. Canon Lawrence Kofi Agbenyo Tete. Are there more titles you'd like to add to it? I think you've got it all. i got it all. Thank you. Okay, so the first question I would like to ask is that um, as an astute preacher, many people have noticed that you bring in a lot of inspiring stories to your sermons and some have wondered whether it's premeditated or they are real life experiences we know that some of them are real life but for the benefit of our viewers we would like you to share some light on it thank you very much and it is reverend canon and then Kofi Agwini with her. So you did well. So the, the canon came before the doctor. And the canon is because I was made a canon by Anglican Church. So it was stored on me. Now, to tell you the truth, I've never planned my preaching before. I did not go to any theology school. I've had a chance to speak, teach, and lecture in many school of theologies, including the prestigious or robust university. But I read the Bible on my own, read books of my own, read books of my own, I don't know how Don't forget my background is economics and international relations. So that is what I do as, did as a professional, as a vocation. But I'm inspired by the word of God. And I'm also inspired by their faith, by the spiritual direction. So singing in my ministry, dancing, Stories are all inspired, but the stories I say are true stories. I, over the years, have been very worried about men of God exaggerating something that really happened. Story happened here, story happened here. I know a lot of people say things there. I wonder why people want worry themselves to say things like that. If I see something about you, I will tell you. If I have not seen it, I will tell you. Even if I see something about you, is something that will not make sense or will not give you faith or I would say I, I have always believed that we've taken the place of God when we don't have to. And there's no need for me to prove any spirituality. I, I've never believed in that anyway. I think that is a form of insecurity. Men of God trying to prove spiritual point of view. If whatever opinion people have about it, they have it anyway. If you think the man is anointed, you know. If you think the man is not anointed, you know. People preach and we know the end results of the preaching. And so, this is a, must be inspired. And like we, we always say, I don't even know which song I'm going to sing when I preach. It comes, it coordinates with my message. I believe I was called as a psalmist. And so, as a psalmist, some of these songs get to eat and don't forget my mother was a chorister in the Methodist church so as a little boy I incubated this that is how I was. thank you very much also the next question I would like to ask is um, we know the national prayer rally is ongoing and um, would like to find out from you the thing behind the national prayer rally we all know that it is, this nonsense must stop you, I know you've shed light on that before, but for the privilege of our viewers, we would also like you to share it once again. So, nonsense simply means absurdity. Something like that not make sense. Something like that. I, I, the Oxford English Dictionary explain it as something that is not acceptable. A language that is not acceptable. A situation is not acceptable. An environment typical one is where people are going to certain things when they look at it. A lot of people are going to certain things. Right. One of the examples that I've always given is the prodigal son. The Bible says his father had two sons. He was one of them. His father had many servants. It means his father was a very wealthy man. His father had properties that he could buy to give. It means his father was wealthy. Yes, so this young man little mistake he did, landed him in a big farm, eating with pigs, eating the food of the pigs. It's absolutely it's 
said in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 5, that the rich are walking on the floor and the slaves are riding on horses. As we speak today now, there are many young men and women who are suffering from what you look at their lives. But having a look at life in general, there's political nonsense, there's academic nonsense, there's social nonsense, there's marriage nonsense, there's family nonsense, and there's nonsense in our health. Anything that does not add up, does not make sense, it's nonsense. So this nonsense must stop. It was a message that God gave to me a couple of years ago. And I have spoken about it in many nations of the world. This nonsense must stop. It's why you are doing everything right. Yes, you know, things to get well. You are eating the right food. You are eating at the right time. You are sleeping at the right time. You are doing all the things you are doing. But some medicine is not working in your body. And you are sick. So are people doing everything right? Going to church, paying their tithe, paying their offering, serving God. Pray. These things are not working. Look at the number of people today who have been having issues with marriages. You wonder what to do. It's nonsense. Thank you very much, Dr. Loris Tete. And we know that National Prayer Rally is one year this year, and it's been an awesome journey. We would like you to tell us um, what you'd want the rest of the nation, I would say, of the world to know and to inspire them to be a part of this great movement. Today I was on Ghana Television GTV, and one of the things I said is that Ghana as a nation is losing sight of the power and the potency of prayer. Any man or any group of people who don't invest in prayer are There are pressures of this world. There are problems we face. There are many things many, many women are going through. And to be surprised, all of us here today, they are going through our own thing. Sometimes, the way certain people handle their situation will make you feel that they don't have problems. If everybody is to tell their problem, everybody at one stage of their life is facing. And so the prayer sessions were supposed to give unto God. The Bible said the federal fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, and righteousness is sought in nation. Say so if we can pray, things happen. Jesus prayed, Joseph prayed, Daniel prayed. Meshach and Abednego, they prayed. Abraham prayed. If you check men and women in the Bible who made an impact, Moses prayed. It is this kind of prayers that worked in. And don't forget that Solomon was instructed clearly by God. And that is the scripture portion I use for this nonsense must stop prayer. Right. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 verse 7 conditions. Four of them was direction. Three of them was the conclusion. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. My one, my two, pray. And my three, seek my face. And my four, turn from their wicked. Solution is three. Then God will hear from heaven, number one, forgive their sins, number two, and heal them. But says, you and I seated here today, until we devote ourselves to prayer, we will lack. Until we devote ourselves to prayer, we will not be able to fight principalities and powers. Until we genuinely devote ourselves to prayer, we live in sin. We are sinners. I mean, I, I'm here to see somebody who says it's blameless. And some people look at sin as fornication alone, sin as uh, uh, certain things we do. As, but we sin. We sin every day. Even our attitude. I know you don't have an attitude, do you? Mm-hmm. Even the way you sit down is an attitude. You see, so, so we sin every day. We do things every day that is not totally acceptable. So we must come to God in humility. And I have coined a word. A prayerless man is a powerless man. A prayerless people are a powerless people. Certainly a prayerless nation is a powerless nation. Give me a man who is not strong, who is not powerful, who cannot stand, I'll tell you, they are 
realities. I have survived. In spite of all my challenges and my weaknesses in life, on the basis of prayer, I recommend prayer to any man, any woman. So the National Prayer Rally is a call to all the same to come from every nook and cranny of our community to come and lift our God. When the book of Joel says we should call her Salamas, gather the children, the babies, the adults, the priests, and let's pray. Who knows? God come and lay before us grain offering, wine offering. Thank you very much, Dr. Lawrence Tete, for making time to be with us today. Yes, one will put down a thousand, two will put down ten thousand. So come and join in the corporate prayer and let us push our issues to God and God will hear us from above. Thank you.